Hey guys, come here. Too hard. Too Is anyone home? It's like that. You go into a tiny village and these little dogs that are completely harmless. Pure. Pure. Saoud. Saoud. Yeah. Hey guys, um, now this morning what we're going to do is make a video all about the heart of the Algarve. There's a beautiful village called Salid and the reason we chose this village is because um, more and more expats are choosing to live away from the coast and move towards the interior of the Algarve. Now why do you reckon that is? Well the coast is beautiful and it really appeals to a certain you know, demographic and, and, and certain of you guys love the coast. Everybody who I speak to in my, in my um, chats that I do like this paid chat thing and everyone who speaks who I speak to want to live on the coast, 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 coast and it's beaches, bars, golf clubs, that's what they want but now there are more and more expats are actually moving away from the coast and moving to the interior of the Algarve. Now why is that? Well the thing is in the interior of the Algarve it's much more you, get, you can get more integrated into the life of Portugal as a country. It's much more authentic. Um, less people speak Portuguese, so it's a little bit more tricky like that. But you'll, have to be, you'll be forced to learn Portuguese, which is great. It's more peaceful. There's not much traffic. There's not much, not, not much going on. It's really, really peaceful. And house prices are much cheaper. So on the contrary, obviously the coast is amazing. It's right, wonderful to live next to the beach, but yeah, it's a little bit more busy and things are a bit more expensive and it's less Portuguese. It's more cosmopolitan and traditional. There's cocktail bars, etc., etc. So, you know, it's your choice at the end of the day. But what we've decided to do is we've arranged with a real estate agent to go and pretend to live in a house right in the heart of Salir. And this house is for sale. And we'll tell you exactly how much it's for and everything like that. But because if you do buy this through, through us or through the channel, because we're not real estate agents, we just made an arrangement with him. We will get a little referral fee and that really helps to support the channel and so we can carry on creating more and more videos like this. So what we've done is we've woken up in this house and we've driven down to Rocha de Pena, which uh, you'll see what it is. Okay, did I just wink at you there? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> okay, good morning. Well, I've arrived here in Rocha de Pena and what we're going to do is we're going to mount this, uh, mount this mountain. And um, the idea was to try and get up here by dawn. So, since look, it's lights breaking in the east. Wow, it's a bright light, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it's a bit bright. <laughs> okay, so um, we've started our hike, and our mission is to try and get to the top by sunrise. Um, it's sort of getting a little bit light over there, but. The idea, the reason you chose this place, Fiona, by the way, this is Fiona, and if you haven't seen it before, and there's Jerome, there's Jerome. <laughs> you haven't seen them before, they're in a couple of my other videos, especially the mountain biking video, right? Gravel bike video. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, come here. See, this is classic Algarve. Come on, boys. We're lucky we didn't get attacked. <laughs> is, it's just always like that. You go into a tiny village and these little dogs that are completely harmless most of the time, you hope. Stop coming for, and yapping at your heels. Except for the scar I have on my leg from Oh dog. really? Yeah. I've Good I've been way. barked at a million times and I've never been bitten, so fingers crossed. Good job. That. <laughs> It's a brilliant idea. All right, let's go. Ah, look what you found, eh? Look at those clouds coming over there. Isn't that amazing?
Nick? Um, uh, looks like a pile of rocks to me. <laughs> it is a pile of rocks. It's a very old pile of rocks. Uh, it's believed to date back to the Iron Age. And uh, yeah, this is part of just a defensive wall that was built up here. Yeah. And there's a cave here called the Algarda's Moors, and uh, this is because the Moors hid in this cave. Don't ask me where the cave is, because I think it's quite hard to find. <laughs> 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 so historically, as far as I'm aware, the Moors were kicked out of the, of the Algarve in the following way, and apparently Salir Castle was one of the last stands. Then they must have either gone to Rosha de Pena, uh, or a section of them went to Rosha de Pena, and um, hid up there in the hills and possibly in that cave. And then they went down to Parena Castle. Um, and from there, they waited down at the um, Praia dos Ninhos de Jandorinhos, which is a beautiful little cave right down in Albufeira. And um, this is where they were waiting for their boats and things like that. So this is as far as I understand it. I'm sure historians will put me to rights. But that's as far as I understand. And historically, Rosh Hashanah was involved in this entire thing. And as you can see, it's really quite interesting because um, the Rosh Hashanah tour, or the, the route, um, if you can see over here, we stopped at these walls. And you can see them clearly on Google Earth. Those two fortifications are a part of the Iron Age fortification. So it's a very fascinating part of history to see, and they still remain to this day. Um, yeah, that was a great walk, actually. Thanks yeah. for the cars in here. It was really um, nice, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks for that. It was a really good idea. So we're just going to pop back to this house that we're pretending to be staying in, just so you can get the right impression of how what life is like here. And then what are we going to do then? Go and have a coffee in, in Salir, I think. And a tourada. And a tourada. And a we'll galal. let you know what a tourada is. <laughs> tourada. <laughs> All right, cool, let's go. Right, I'll follow you. I guess so you were talking about touradas, right? Tourada. Tourada. Okay, so tourada is just toast. Very easy. So did you enjoy your typical Portuguese breakfast? Here? I always enjoy my typical Portuguese breakfast. That's the highlight of my day. It's all downhill from now on. And how about you, Jerome? My omelette was very nice. Spectacular. I'm just going to head back to the house quickly and we'll show you exactly what this house is all about. I think we just want to talk a little bit about this house, obviously, and we can tell you guys all about the details of this house. And, and yeah, it is for sale and it does help us because we do get a referral fee. So that'd be great if you bought the house. But the real idea of this video is to try and show you what life is really like in the country, away from the coast. And it's a, and first of all, obviously, it's a, it's a lot cheaper. Yep. Um, but secondly, I mean, you live in, in, the, in the country. You live in Elk just down the road. Yeah. What, what are the benefits of living in the country like this? I mean, apart from... 
It's incredible view. I mean, th that's part of it. The countryside, the nature. I mean, where we were this morning. You, this is why I love, I love it in the countryside. Mm. You're away from the hustle and bustle. You're away from the traffic. Uh, you're away from the high prices. You just feel like you're living in a. In Portugal. In, in Portugal, real yeah. Portugal, and that's what I love. I mean, I never wanted to be part of the, um, you know, the the expat community and only um, socialise with expats. I really mm. wanted to be in, kind of integrated and the only way we were going to do that is by living somewhere like this and I just love it. I absolutely love it. And I mean, obviously when you first arrived you didn't speak much Portuguese and is a Portuguese a massive barrier for you or, or not? In, in small uh, towns because it's hard. I'm not going to lie, it was really hard at the beginning. The first year was really hard. I had some really tough moments. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the, about the one year mark was actually weirdly it was a low point because I'd got over this kind of euphoria of moving and it, everything was great and it was sunny and uh, fantastic and then I just really didn't feel like myself because I'm a talker and I want to express myself and I want to converse with people and I you just talker, couldn't yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't <laughs> Portuguese and um and so it took a bit of an effort to get over that um, that language barrier but that's me I mean lots of people here don't speak such good Portuguese and they still get by fine um, it just depends what kind of lifestyle you want but, but are there experts in Alt and and do the locals speak Portuguese and in, in, do the locals speak English in Alt actually a lot example? of them do yeah. and a lot of them speak French as well um, yeah. but uh, yeah I mean even if you can learn the basics it, it, it breaks down those barriers enough mm. that you can still have a really, really pleasant time there. I know lo I have lots of neighbours. Two of our best friend neighbours, both English couples, do not speak almost a word of mm. English and they still have a really nice time there. And there's the thing as well, just because you're living in a place doesn't mean you have to stay there all the time. You know what I mean? You can no. live there and you come back. I mean, you imagine coming back to this house every single night with this beautiful view, sitting, uh, sipping something on G&T on the, on the veranda here or whatever. I mean, that's an amazing lifestyle and you've just got birds around you. Um, one problem that a lot of people talk about in the country is the, the noise of barking dogs. And yeah. our guy Pedro, who's selling this house, he's the agent, he's a really cool guy. He actually, you know, I, I trust him and believe him, and he says there are no dogs around here. I mean, there's no, there are no barking dogs around Well, we here. would hear them now if there were, because yeah. we're talking and they would hear us. And in the minute you arrived, like we were walking through that village earlier, but dogs going bark, 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 bark. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing, but um, yeah. Um, that's yeah. You know, so the point what I was trying to make was that if you're living in a house like this, it's only what is it, 20 minutes to Lole? 21 minutes to Lole and 30 minutes to the beach, the closest beach. So you I know, mean, if you're gonna go to the beach for the day, what's 30 minutes? Yeah, that's nothing. So it doesn't mean that you don't ever get to see the beach by living in the country. You can walk, you can explore, you can go to Lagos, you can go to Tavira, you can go wherever because there's highways. Yeah, I guess the thing for me is that properties like this, and there are plenty others that are a bit similar, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, some with more or less need for renovation. But because of the price point, they allow somebody to move here without completely breaking the bank, but live somewhere nice. You're living in a, a nice detached house and with a view and a south facing view, and you could put a pool in and you have a big garden. Yeah, you can make it your own. You can make that yeah. dream happen and for, for the prices. I think that's the point in, in rural, the rural interior Algarve. I think people can feel a bit afraid of making that step away from the coast. Um, but actually with modern communication now, Everyone's so much more connected anyway, I even within their own house. Talking about modern communications, I just did an internet test here. We've got like 15 megabytes from that 4G tower over in Salir. Oh, there we go. So there you go. I mean, it's like you can be a digital nomad, work here. There's, this house is actually quite, quite good for that because it's got um, a special sort of office area up there. But let's just go and have a little look around the house. Unfortunately, I have to split this up into two parts. So episode two will be coming super soon and you'll be able to tour the house and we'll take you on this incredible lunch in the middle of nowhere with an, in oh, it's just exciting, it really is. Um, and, and it really showcases how people live in Portugal itself. And it's very different to the strip on the coast that we're all used to when we come to the Algarve. So don't forget to check that out, episode two. And thanks so much for watching this. Now, if you can't wait for episode two for the tour of the house, get in touch with Pedro and Pedro algarvedics.com forward slash Pedro. That's how you just go there and fill in the form and then he'll get back to you in a couple of days. Hopefully a little bit shorter. Um, but Pedro runs an estate agency in um, based in Lulay 
and he's got properties around Lole, so Saubraj, Olyao, Salir, all these areas around there, and also a couple down in Quatera, um, and obviously in Lole itself as well. So he's got some greatly priced properties on there. I'd urge you to go check it out. Um, and it's not like Idealista, he's got, you know, proper, um, proper listings. So check it out. And, um, and yeah, we'll see you in, in, a, in a couple of days when we release the next video, all about just in continuation of this theme. So thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And um, it's really exciting to see you guys subscribing and building up and it's uh, the growth of the channel um, really excites me. And I love going out to make all these videos. I really do. So the more it grows, the more I'll be able to carry on doing this and, and uh, make it a sustainable um, operation for me. So thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> See you next time. Holgarvaddicts.com